So YouTube has been an excellent, a fantastic Battletech resource, along with various Facebook groups that I'm a member of, enjoying the posts and the tactica. In terms of the quick draw, I say this because it's really an unscientific assessment study, the quick draw doesn't really seem to get much notice, doesn't really seem to be built in a lot of lances. And in breaking down the tactica, I've played it a few times. It's not one of my primary mechs. I mean, in, in all fairness, there's a lot of mechs out there that I really enjoy playing. And even jumping back and forth with some experimental tech, there's just not enough battle value, even in Alpha Strike, to throw down all these machines. But in exploring my own games where I've played the Quick Draw, I have the model in my collection, It's it's been a pretty solid performer. And I think it can be pushed, I know tactically, personally for myself, I think it can be pushed a little bit further. So let's apply this Tactica checklist and ask ourselves the quick draw, yes, no, maybe, what role does it fulfill, and is this a mech to incorporate into your collection at some point, sooner or later? So we start off with the LRM-10, long range. A 10-pack, as I mentioned yesterday when we were exploring the Centurion, 10-pack on a medium mech is the lightest I want to go. What this means is an average roll will have an okay spread. It's not going to push out alpha damage. It's not pushing out, say, an LRM-20 or a 15, but it's not pushing out an LRM-5, where even if you roll legendary, it's not going to do much damage. If we saw an LRM-10 on a light mech, well, that's a novelty, like the Valkyrie. But on the mediums and the heavies, and as we move forward, 10 is the minimum. I'd like to see 15s and 20s, but I understand the limitations of uh, the limitations of space and ammo and weight and location. So the quick draw has something for that long range. And at this at this weight class, I'm looking for that that long range primary weapon. Doesn't have the redundancy, but it gives you something to do. I'm looking for an auto cannon 10 a PPC, or an LRM-10. It's got something. Side note, pocket note, we could do the indirect fire, but it doesn't have the redundancy. It doesn't have the soak. But if you find yourself in that situation where the Karnoff has dropped off some infantry, they're acting as a spotter, you're in city tech, or you're behind the appropriate terrain and you can get that indirect fire, you have something there. But we're building that base for the LRM-10. What this means now, the second tier weapons, the uh, four pack for the short range missiles and the medium lasers and medium lasers being very, very efficient at this era and tech level. This is a machine that wants to close. This is a machine where we want to get really, really close and engage our opponent. So in, in order to do that, it needs to have weapons that don't have minimum ranges and it needs to have the redundancy in order to be an effective short range brawler short range fighter it has all these things so the lrm10 gives us something to do we get a little closer we get into medium and short range now we're going to start using the medium lasers and with correct heat management not always the easiest thing to do 13 heat sinks uh, you can have a consistent a pretty reasonable consistent rate of fire We're going to utilize the short-range missile pack. We're going to utilize the two medium lasers. Uh, The location is a little bit interesting. Two medium lasers in the arms and in the rear. Now, rear-facing lasers are somewhat unique. They're not mainstream. We see them on the Dragon. Uh, fantastic machine. We see them on the Battlemaster. Fantastic machine. Battlemaster and the Dragon to a lesser extent, but mainly the Battlemaster has the tonnage where you can do that. Generally speaking, as you move into the lower heavies and the mediums, you want all of your tonnage weapons facing forward because I want to utilize these. But the Quick Draw has the short range missile pack and the two medium lasers to have the in the front to have the additional two medium lasers assuming you had the the hard points to to play around and put them there you wouldn't necessarily be able to fire them because of heat and there would be redundancy for redundancy's sake that you don't really need or you don't really require so what this opens up tactically is now you have a machine that is not crippled with its forward-facing weapons, but has the bonus of rear-facing weapons. And with those medium lasers, it's not just one, it has redundancy. This makes the machine an interesting brawler in that uh, 
effective or aggressive light mechs, uh, like the Jenner, comes to mind. Normally, they'll work their way behind machines. Uh, having those two lasers, that's a deterrent. That's a deterrent. Um, Fast-moving hovers that maybe want to just move behind you, that's a deterrent for them. So you're able to, to um, project this dual cone of force, one facing forward significantly with the two lasers and the short-range missile pack, and the two lasers pushing that cone of force behind, that gives multiple threat vectors. That's, that's solid at this, at this entry point. We add on to this, and, and tactically the idea is the LRM, um, simplify that, that flow chart, that checklist. As soon as you're in range, you start firing the long-range missile pack. You soften things up a little bit. Maybe you get lucky. Even if you don't get lucky, you've scratched off a few armor bubbles. Um, you've signaled to your opponent, hey, we're, we're going we're gonna to commit. We're going to do this. When you get close enough, now the lasers are looking to strip armor and the short-range missiles are potentially looking to also strip off armor. It's a four-pack. It's not a six. But again, in terms of short-range missiles, six, yeah, I want six. Four is acceptable. Two, only on light machines or as a, as a secondary, secondary type weapon that we see on, on some of the heavier mechs or some of the heavy medium mechs. But the two medium lasers and the SRM-4 strip off armor bubbles, crit seek, and now we add on the bonus for the rear. That's interesting. That's, that's got some bite. It's got a, a consistent amount of higher firepower than you think. But it gets a little bit more interesting. The design quirk of the mech, and this, um, this supports it in the literature, in the narrative, the tech manual, and later on they added the design quirk so you could play with it. I would kind of get approval ahead of time so my opponent um, understands, and, that, and that's not like trying to pull a fast one on them. They would understand the technical readout of a quick draw. It's a common mech. They would know it could do this. Uh, it's just good wargaming etiquette, battle tech etiquette, in that your opponent knows the things that you're bringing and understands uh, the the stats of each mech. You know, unless you're playing like a custom mission where you've made something custom and the players are discovering it for the first time. I mean, there are role playing aspects of self discovery and unknown factors that you can pull in. But tactically speaking, head to head, uh, let's agree ahead of time with what we're playing. The design quirk means even though it has the hands and the actuators, which means you can't flip and shoot behind you. This design quirk allows you to flip the arms. Well, now what this means is delivering potentially an alpha strike from behind. An alpha strike from behind. So that aggressive Jenner or that crazy locust pilot, you know, with the uh, medium laser and the two short range missiles gets behind you. You flip those arms, declare primary. Now you have four laser shots, medium laser shots on there. That's got some bite. Um, you also still have the short-range missiles in the front to deter a little bit there. So that threat bubble really increases. You also, with the configuration, with the quick draw, kind of get into to interesting scenarios. Things every now and then that, that happen that look funny, but do give you some interesting tactica. This idea that um, moving forward, you can walk or run, but moving behind, well, walk, run, jump. Moving backwards, you can only walk or jump. Well, sometimes with the quick draw having hands, picking up an object, if it's a cash and grab and go, and now the, the lulls of your quick draw could be running away, does have rear armor, you're giving rear armor to your opponent, but maybe you make the decision, I can expedite getting out of there quicker by running away, or if you have to run away or tactically redeploy, it's not like you don't have any weapons. Or you only have one medium laser or two, you know, only two pop guns. No, you've got four. You flip those hands back and, and all of a sudden you're, um, you're, you're utilizing that. Bonus, bonus, bonus question point that I don't know the answer of. And, and I was asked this and this is one of the things that kind of got us interested in, in the quick draw. Can you punch behind you? If you can flip those arms, can you punch? Now, I can't use the, um, unless I'm playing with the optional rule, the punch through strike, I can't fire the weapon and then punch, looking at the basic rules. But within those basic rules for physical attacks, if I've got, um, let's say, a medium in front of me and I've got a light behind me, quick draw's got a little bit of bite and tonnage, could I punch punch behind me? I've looked. I know it's there. 
but I'm not seeing it. So I won't weigh yes or no. I will turn that over to you guys in the comments section for potential possible clarification of that. But otherwise, a really interesting, effective, and, and capable machine that I think doesn't seem, unscientifically, doesn't seem to get the love, doesn't get to see the play as much as many of the other mechs do.